Hello, welcome to the first video in a new course, I don't know, series, set of videos that I am here, me, Dan Schiffman, presenting to you on my YouTube channel, The Coding Dream. Okay, so what is this? Uh, you might be aware, you might remember me from such videos as The Nature of Code. Um, I have a playlist of videos. Most of these videos were recorded probably several years ago. Um, they cover, um, I'm going to zoom in here, all of these topics one through eight. And I, I have a book which covers all of these topics one through eight. And I've been teaching a class at uh, about this stuff for a bunch of years, many years, almost like seven or eight years, in fact. And so this year I am trying something new with this course and therefore also on this YouTube channel. Now, what is this new thing that I'm trying? What always happens when I teach this course is if it's a full semester course at a like kind of university-like place, um, there are, where am I? Ah, over here. There are these 10 topics. Oh, you can't see the bottom. Let's see. Um, I'm, I'm not zoomed properly. Okay, there we go. There are these 10 topics. And what happens is, you know, this here, the first half of it is really about physics simulation, animation, moving things on the screen, um, and all the kind of stuff you could do with that. And by the time we get to this, people are on their way and they've been overloaded. They're trying to learn all this stuff that What's here in 9 and 10, chapters 9 and 10, gets lost. So what I'm doing this year, is, and starting right now, is I would like to take what's in this book here, 9 and 10, chapters 9 and 10, and expand the material out over to something that would be several, you know, many sessions, about seven, five or six or seven or eight, I have no idea, some amount of sessions of content where I take a closer look at topics related to, and here's the title of this course, Intelligence and Learning. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to write that down. This is like what people who are teachers, I've been watching some like open courseware, uh, you know, you have a big chalkboard and then you just like make a point and you write it down. So I'm going to do that. Uh, intelligence and learning. Now, I am specific, first of all, well, there's a, I'm specifically not calling this a course like artificial intelligence. Nor am I calling this a course like introduction to machine learning. Nor am I saying it's a course called, say, introduction to deep learning. So, so what's one reason why I'm not calling it that? Well, first of all, I'm afraid of all these things. So I feel like if I call it, this is a course on artificial intelligence or machine learning, that's a little bit scary to me. So the other reason why I want to call it intelligence and learning is I want to take the broadest approach possible. So you watching this course, whether it's you implement the latest and greatest perfect machine learning neural network convolutional recurrent magical system thing that does something you read about in some academic paper, or you make some crazy project where it seems like the computer is playing this goofy game with you and, it, and how could it possibly be doing that? So there's a lot of space in between. And for me, I want to just really take a broad approach to and this, not just look at only you know, neural networks and machine learning and not just look at only these topics in artificial intelligence. And, uh, and okay, so first of all, let's, I'm kind of blending all these terms. Let's try to at least define them. So uh, let's, uh, I, I saw this chart in a book somewhere, so I'm gonna recreate it. So artificial intelligence is a topic. So, so what is artificial intelligence? Well, I actually just uh, uh, recently watched a lecture by a professor at MIT, Patrick Winston. Patrick Winston, I think, says at the opening of the lecture, uh, models, someone will correct me if I'm wrong, for thinking, perception, and action. So this is a very broad term. So let's think about this for a second. Let me go back to some of my other examples. I'm going to come over here. And I'm going to open up where, if, if we were following along with the sort of pre, if we stopped here at week six or session six or chapter six, whatever you want to call it, and I ran this flocking simulation, I could ask the question, is this artificial intelligence? Wait, nobody can answer this question. I want to hear from you. So I, I want to, I'm, I'm asking this question, that, but what's interesting, whether or not you want to say yes or no, I'm going to go back to here for a second. 
models for thinking, perception, and action. So one thing, if you remember, if you look at steering behaviors, and steering behaviors pioneered by Craig Reynolds, uh, what is it? Um, a uh, action, steering, locomotion. So I've really been focusing on steering. How do you calculate a steering force? How do you do the physics for that? And how do you actually make that triangle move from one pixel to another? Uh, and steering and locomotion kind of cover all of those pieces. Action, this is a place where, well, what is the action? What are the goals? In the flocking system, the goals are stay with your neighbors, but don't crash into your neighbors, and also stay, stay in proximity to your neighbors, and also move in the same direction as your neighbors, but don't crash into your neighbors. And the other kind of um, action things that you might select is follow this thing, or chase this thing, or run away from this thing, or try to get through this doorway the fastest as you can. So what's interesting here is seeing this link is what are models for thinking and perception that might lead to action to govern the types of animated systems that you might create? So this to me is the link here. Whether it's enough to say I am going to kind of define the rules, almost known as a, like a rule-based system, feature engineering, so to speak, like I don't need a learning-based system. I'm going to define the rules of how all these things should behave, but they're going to appear intelligent versus something like a learning system which has to learn over time. So machine learning, being something that uh, crosses over with artificial intelligence. You know, I think of machine learning as uh, something that you have data and you make meaning from that data. So how do you, how do you, and, and the you know, two, there's, there's more to it than this, but you know, one of the most uh, classic applications of a machine learning system is classifying data. Classification. So here's a bunch of pictures, which ones are cats? and which ones are dogs. And there's more, you know, the, the other type of system that you, uh, classic application of machine learning is regression, which instead of categorizing into a discrete set of labels, you know, cats or dogs, you might say, you know, here's all of these, um, you, you want to arrive at a more continuous result. So here's all these properties of a house, how many bedrooms, where is it located, how many bathrooms, and can the, can the system take that data and determine, predict a price. So um, these are two classic uh, tasks in machine learning. Now, what's in the news and what's all the rage, what, what's everybody working with these days uh, are neural networks. So, you know, a popular and r powerful and exciting, so much new research in this right now, recently, of creating machine learning systems to do these tasks with neural networks. However, in this course, I want to look at other systems that do the same thing, that are simpler, um, that might not be as powerful, but might have opportunities for creative possibilities. But also, if you can use the simpler system for the same result, it's going to make it a little easier to perhaps dive into what, <laughs> in my mind, might be the most difficult. I might cancel this part. Actually, last time I mentioned machine learning, a fire alarm went off, which saved me, and nothing happened this time. <laughs> but, um, so, so we'll see. So now. So these are, these are areas where I want to just look at and cover in this course. Um, now what's this thing down here under DL? This is deep learning, and you know what? I'm gonna put deep learning in here. So as I just mentioned, uh, one technique for performing these machine learning tasks is using something called an artificial neural network. So in the case of an artificial neural network, that data that you're trying to classify enters as input to something called a neuron. And then passes through a network of neurons to have some sort of output. And I spelled that wrong, but close enough. Cat, dog, price of a, price of a house, that sort of thing. Now, an artificial neural network is a system, and I'm gonna get more into this in another video that's specifically just about this, so I kinda wanna just actually kinda move ahead and skip over this, but the reason why I was mentioning this is there's a, quite a, there's a long history of this, and the very first discovery of an artificial neural network, and we're, I'm gonna build one of these in a future coding challenge, is called a perceptron, which is a neural, it's, it's almost wrong to call it a network because it's a single neuron, so a model for a single neuron. An artificial neural network being a model for many interconnected neurons. Maybe it's a fully connected network, maybe it's like a 
partially connected network. But the reason why so much re that there has been a revolution in research and applications uh, neural networks, when they were first discovered, this idea of a perceptron couldn't solve very simple problems. So there's a famous paper, the perceptron paper, McCullough Pitts. I believe I'm getting that right. <laughs> Somebody in the chat will confirm. I'll try to have a link to that information in this video's description. Um, and there were various steps along the way, but there was a long time before anyone was really able to do a lot of work with uh, neural networks. And so deep learning refers to the idea of a neural network which has a lot of depth to it. So in between the inputs and the outputs, output, and th these could be both be plural or singular, there are many, many, many layers. It is deep, very deep. Um, so you know, you could imagine all of these connections. And so the idea here, and, and, and you know, the training systems and how it works and how the learning system, oh, we've got to get into all that. But that's not for this video right here. I got, got, off, got off on this tangent um, about neural networks. So this is, these are the different aspects of the pieces of this course that I would like to look at. Now, let me come back over here. OK, so let me take a look at the uh, list of topics. I'm going to skip uh, week one for a second. Oops, so this is the course. If you want, uh, this URL will be in the video's description. Um, this is the, uh, the uh, syllabus for the course. It's kind of my working document. Boy, do I accept any and all contributions and help. So feel free to um, uh, file GitHub issues and pull requests and things. And if I come down here to the, oh, and I'm kind of in a place where you can't really see it, I'm going to uh, skip, skip over week one. And so here are my topics. So I'm going to go through these kind of quickly. Uh, again, this is very survey oriented, and, boy, and I'm missing a ton of stuff. You know. So this is just a selection, but I'm also still figuring this out. So next week, I'm going to uh, talk about genetic algorithms, which is an evolutionary-based approach to uh, solving problems with, which is a way of solving problems in software, uh, taking inspiration from evolutionary processes in nature. So I already have a bunch of videos on that, and I'll do some more content about that as well, and that will be in next week. Um, oh, this should say classification and regression. Um, and recently, I learned. Um, that the term regression comes from uh, regression to the mean, and this is like a 19th century uh, concept. But anyway, uh, I'll talk about where I'm getting all my info. I just read a bunch of books in the last week. I have to thank all these people that I'm you know, probably messing up all the stuff that I read. Um, but uh, I want to get interested in those. T I want to get started with those tasks without using uh, neural ne network-based models. So something called k-nearest neighbor. Uh, one of the things I would like to do is build a, a simple uh, movie recommendation system with k-nearest neighbor as an idea. If you have an idea for a data set or an interesting creative application for k-nearest neighbor that's very simple, with a simple data set that I can work with, I would love that suggestion. Uh, and also linear regression. So I want to do, um, do an example of the sort of simplest form of regression. Uh, and we can think of that in a, um, uh, uh, with an input and, and, and having an output um, that's a continuous uh, floating point value. So um, I want to look at that. And when we'll do that, we're going to get all this stuff like, oh, there's a learning rate. And what's this gradient descent thing? And all this woo stuff. So hopefully kind of defining some of the terminology and understanding those pieces as we look at k, k nearest neighbor and linear regression will, um, will give us a leg up for the next week when we look at neural networks. So I would like to build some simple neural network examples from scratch. Uh, and when I, all, all of this stuff I'm going to do so far probably in processing or JavaScript using the P5.js library, some combination of those things. So if we want to build a perceptron, you know, if I'm feeling ambitious, we might look at what happens if instead of a perceptron we have a multi-layered network. And uh, you know, all of this, you can think of the neural network as like you're tuning all of these knobs so that the output gives you something that's Correct. You know, you, there's a whole training process that we're going to have to discuss called supervised learning, supervised learning, unsupervised learning, reinforcement learning. Interesting topics that I'm going to get into. Um, but uh, with one of the most complex aspects of neural networks is what do you do? How do you train all that stuff that's in the middle? And so there's a concept known as back back propagation that I. That's like almost. Almost like quaternions for me, but I'm not running out of the room just yet. Um, and once I get to there, I want to investigate some other platforms. So I might, if I'm, I might, all this is, I might, but my plan and hope is to look a bit at, um, it, once we've built some simple examples from scratch, to look at other tools uh, um, for some more sophisticated applications like TensorFlow. Uh, 
and then be able to get into certain specific kinds of neural networks that can do different kinds of tasks. What is a convolution network? What is a recurrent network? And what is reinforcement learning? So those are some aspects of things. And you know, on, I don't plan on building those uh, larger, more sophisticated systems from scratch. But if we can build some basic ones, understand how everything works, then my thinking is then we'll have a leg up to using frameworks and tools to do some of the other stuff. Um, again, all this is subject to change. One of the things I mentioned this last week that I'm hoping to do, because even though I might move to some, something like TensorFlow and Python to demonstrate some examples in some of these other areas, I would love to work on a simple web server that runs TensorFlow in the background that Processing or P5 could talk to. There are also examples of some of these written in JavaScript, well-known examples by Andre Karpathy, the recurrent uh, rnn.js and convnet, con Convenet, I'm going to pronounce that, dot JS. So uh, people are telling me time's up. I'm, I told people, I'm doing this live, but you might be watching this as an archive, that I wanted to keep this to 20 minutes. OK, so that's my introduction. Uh, I, you know, here's the thing. I'm learning this stuff. So if you want to go watch a course from somebody who really knows this stuff, I will uh, link to lots of resources. And that's what I meant to, uh, what I wanted to, um, I wanted to mention some resources that I'm using. Ah, very important that I will include in this video's description. Um, and I think here under the wiki, under related projects and resources, um, here, are, um, here are some resources that I want to specifically mention. So one is a website called Machine Learning for Artists. It's got videos, ex uh, video tutorial, video lectures, uh, examples, written descriptions, lots of wonderful thing by an artist and researcher named Gene Kogan, absolute expert, wonderful in this field. Uh, I watched a lot of Rebecca Fiebrink's Machine Learning for Musicians and Artists videos. Rebecca Fiebrink uh, has made something absolutely wonderful called Weckinator, which is a tool that allows you to send data, it does machine learning stuff, and it sends it back out all with something called OSC, Open Sound Control. I would love to do some video tutorials on that or have uh, some guest tutorials from Rebecca uh, Fiebrink. Um, there's also a, a Cadenze course on a creative applications with TensorFlow that I intend to look at and get some resources from. Um, I also want to mention um, the, let's see, what else? Ah, uh, uh, Andrew Glasner is writing a book about machine learning and deep learning. It is not out yet, but he was generous enough to let me look at some preview drafts. So uh, thank you very much. Follow at Andrew Glasner on Twitter uh, if you want to find out about his upcoming uh, book that's coming out. It's been really helpful to read. And I'm sure there are, um, uh, yeah, uh, also, uh, oh, I, uh, Grokking Deep Learning uh, is a book from Manning and Grokking Algorithms. These are books that I've mentioned that I have kind of have been looking, as well as uh, Make Your Own Neural Network, which is a, a book that walks you through programming your own neural network in Python. Now, people in the chat are giving me lots of suggestions for other uh, deep learning and machine learning and AI books. Oh, I don't have my props. I have these old uh, textbooks. I'll bring those another time on artificial intelligence, which are great. Um, but uh, the other thing I would recommend is uh, these are three com compilations of resources. So this is one that's put together by this community. This is uh, awesome machine learning. There's a lot of awesome blank lists um, that uh, uh, are put together. Let me, let me see who puts this together just because I forgot. Uh, from uh, Joseph Misciti on uh, GitHub. And uh, also, uh, this is a, a list of resources from uh, Memo Atkin. OK, so uh, please, I'm accepting all suggestions and help and examples and ideas. I look forward to all of the uh, hopefully not so angry letters I will receive as I screw everything up over the next six or seven weeks. We're going to, um, uh, you know, I have, I guess what I didn't really say is I have, you know, to wrap up here, what I have is these two chapters in Nature of Code, which deal with genetic algorithms and the basics of neural networks. That's where I've kind of left my knowledge behind. And I'm embarking on this journey here on YouTube to try to expand past what's in there. And we will see how it goes. So thanks for joining me. And I look forward to seeing you in some future videos. Oh, I'm back. I do this a lot. <laughs> I'm back because I forgot that I had this page of notes and instead I just rambled. And you know, it's got a, a few more links about thinking about the definition of artificial intelligence and machine learning. I'm still working on stuff. You'll find this also linked. But you know, something really important here that I wanted to just mention was, uh, you know, it's it's very important when studying, and I'm really just going to be looking at the algorithms and making stuff and trying to be creative and wackadoodling my way through this if that's a verb. <laughs> but it is really important. For you, the world of people who are going to be using these tools, 
using these algorithms, making projects, working for companies to be critical and think about what you're doing and whether it's even a good idea and is it hurting anybody, is it helping anybody? And so um, there are some, uh, you know, some, uh, uh, one thing I'll just mention here is uh, there's an organization called AI Now, which I just learned about recently. Um, I thought I just clicked on them, yep, over here, uh, which is an initiative to research the social impacts of artificial intelligence to ensure a more equitable future. Um, so I encourage you to check out, there's going to be a symposium in July, uh, to check out about this. I also just love this uh, quote from uh, Hard Maru on Twitter, uh, which is, um, who makes, uh, uh, David Ha from Google makes a lot of wonderful, I have, uh, recurrent neural, there's a wonderful recurrent neural network handwriting with P5JS example. Uh, the, um, that uh, um, you can find. I'll try to link to that as well. But, you know, whatever happened to making the world a better place? So, you know, when you talk about what is your goal with building an AI system, with using machine learning, why are you doing it? And so I'll leave you with that. Are you making the world a better place? I hope that you are. And come along. Uh, I'll see you in the next video.